In the regular season, the stakes don't get much higher than they are tonight. At the Carrier Dome, number 16 Syracuse hosting number 12 NC State. A couple of ACC powerhouses jockeying for top four seeds in the NCAA tournament. Earlier this week on Monday night, the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee released its preliminary top 16. If the season were to end today, here are your top 16. Here are your pods. NC State comes in on the two line, notably absent, number 16 Syracuse. Hi, everybody. Welcome inside the Carrier Dome on Doggy Day. Drew Carter, glad to be joined by former Lehigh basketball player Kayla Burton and, and a I special got friend. We We've have got Moose. It is Moose the Corgi. He's a little nervous. It's his first time on TV. <laughs> so Moose the Corgi is here. But Kayla, high stakes battle tonight between two teams who really need this win. Right. This game is going to be extremely important for both teams. You know, they have five regular season games left to play. Never thought I'd be saying this while holding a dog, <laughs> by the way. Five regular, regular, five regular season games left to play. One promise tournament game. It's really extremely important for both teams to come out strong. And one player who's going to be tough to tame for NC State, Tiana Monacahia, the floor general for the Qs. Right. She is dominant. And the best part about her is he, she's a floor general. She gets her, the ball to the players where she wants it. You don't know what she's going to do. She can pop it. She can drive it. And she can pull up and just pass it out to the wing. Whatever she does, she's incredible at doing it. And she's got a stiff test tonight. Her matchup is Aislinn Koenig. They call her ace for a reason. They do call her ace and she also is able to get into the paint. Both point guards, if you can tell, are able to get into the paint and that's what makes their game so great. You also have to, Syracuse is going to have to put high hands on her because she can shoot the three. No surprise, both those players atop the starting lineups for NC State. The head man is Wes Moore in season number six at NC State. He is the only coach in NCAA history to take a Division Three, Division Two, and Division I team to the NCAA tournament. Meanwhile, Coach Quentin Hillsman for Syracuse, he's become a staple on the hill. And we are underway, rocking and rolling at the Carrier Dome. Number 16, Syracuse. Number 12, NC State. There's Monacahia on the ball for the Cuse. Miranda Drummond, red hot last time out against Boston College, and she sustains that that momentum into tonight. NC State is going to have to learn. She had a season high just coming off of her last game. So listen, she's hot and she's going to pop it from the three every single time. Syracuse forces a turnover right away on NC State's first possession and notably absent from that lineup for the Wolfpack, Erica Cassell, the junior forward who has started all 23 games of the season coming in, replaced by the freshman, Elisa Kinane, making her first career start. Dignis Stroutman pulls the trigger. She cannot connect too strong. One of the five starters for Syracuse tonight, led by Tiana Manakahia, like we just said. NC State for the first time in the front court. This is Kinane, the freshman, six foot five. Might not have worked as planned, but it did work for a bucket. Right, it's good defense too by Syracuse, but you can't let that last second point just go. You have to finish to the end. Dee Dee Rogers, the senior forward, finishes. Troutman tries it again. Same spot, same result, unfortunately for Syracuse. And the rebound goes to Rogers, who's now got a couple of points and a board. This is Kai Crutchfield, who's in the starting lineup as a replacement already. NC State has dealt with the injury bug all season long. Coning for Crutchfield near side. They call her Baby Crutch, the sophomore, the youngest starter in this five for the Wolfpack. I love it. I Syracuse absolutely love it. Sets up that nasty defense, but Rogers works through it. So four points for NC State. Give them all to DD Rogers. Syracuse is going to have to play a lot tougher than that. They can't just allow NC State to ride him down into the paint. They have to have high, strong hands. One thing we know about the Cuse is they like to speed it up, led by Manakahia. This time, though, they'll slow it down. Stroutman a watch by Rogers. First touch for Amaya Finkley, the 6'4 center out of mass, and her shot is good. Drew, that's her move. She loves doing that back spin move back to her left hand. NC State's going to have to recognize that's where she's going to go every single time. Finkley shooting it really well lately. That's eight for nine now in her last two games in change. But there's the leading score for the Wolf back here. Leslie barely misses as that one tickled the rim and missed. Monacahia wastes no time, slamming on the gas. Gabrielle Cooper, one of the top snipers on this Syracuse roster, opts not to shoot. Now Manakahia, like we said, Kayla, she's in command 24-7. You don't know what she's going to do. Stop and pop. Not it's a good shot, though, for Syracuse, and it leads to an offensive rebound. And that's her game. She's going to want to pull up almost every single time, but if she doesn't pull up, she's going to the rim. You just don't know what she's doing. She's going to such a hard point guard to defend. Manakahia averaging 15 and 8 assists plus 5 rebounds to boot. A little bit sloppy on the feed for Cooper on the curl. All the way to the cup. Might have taken one extra step, and she did. The call came from the official on the far side, Ed Soloski. So NC State gets it back, trailing by one. About two and a half minutes in, and the press has been a beast so far. Drummond for Cooper. You bet. 
That's a great play. Just a great play by Dummett. Drummond has been on fire lately. Season high, 24 points last time out against BC and a couple of steals early on. She's just locked in. She also knocked down that triple. This is Kanane, who's 6'5", rejected by the 6'4", Finkley. Kanane doesn't get her shot blocked very often, but Finkley had other ideas that time. Why not reward her on the offensive end? Caught it a little too far out. Now she works deeper against Kanane. Finkley over that right shoulder draws the contact. She's on fire early. Again, the same move. She, you know, the up and under to the left hand hook. That is the move that she goes to, and she's so strong with it. Getting her to finish is going to be the next step. Finkley at the stripe. Just a shade below 70% on the season coming in. A five star recruit out of Dorchester, Mass., now in her sophomore season. First free throw, nothing but net. You can tell when a player is hungry coming out of the gates. Right, this team is just locked in. I mean, they know the importance of this game. And to be able to come out as strong as Syracuse is right now matters toward the end. Finkley second free throw a little too short. Kanane's got the board for NC State, a team that has struggled with depth with three of their best players on the shelf with knee injuries. Leslie tries it a little bit too strong. Good board by Rogers, who's a menace on the offensive glass, leading the team more than two offensive boards per game. NC State as a team, beastly on the boards. Rogers to the cup against Drummond. Little too much contact as they knife across the lane. So the foul goes against 32 and White. And now we see the first two subs for Syracuse. So already, Kayla, as the Orange go to the bench, the Wolfpack keep the same five on the floor. Exactly. And that's a great play by Rogers, just getting into the paint. That's what they're going to need to do in order to break up the defense for Syracuse. Maya Vigaldi, Tabdi, and Emily Anxler both check in for Syracuse. A pair of freshmen who have been standouts all season long. Crutchfield to the cup, floater no good. Cooper's got the board for Syracuse. And here they come, watch number four. She's a blur in transition. Good screen from Jaldi Tabdi off the bench. Angsler thought about warming up with one. Instead working her way toward the basket, no good for the five star. Jaldi Tabdi tied up with Kanane. It's a jump ball, good effort by both sides. It goes to the Wolfpack. Coach Q wasn't too happy about Angsler on that shot. You know, letting the game come to you is a huge importance in terms of when you start, especially on, on the floor. She has to just let that come to her. That shot was not there. A little pump fake go by. That would have been the better option. Now, we've seen a few turnovers by NC State against that press. This time they break it, though, Kayla. What do you think of their game plan against the full court press? Reversing the ball is huge. You have to break it. Reversing the ball, but also getting it toward the middle. You can't do too much dribbling in the backcourt. You've got to move the ball to, in order for the defense to shift. Leslie missed it that time. She's now 0 for 3 today. NC State's leading scorer shooting above 43% on the season. Jaldi Tabdi's first bucket, no dice. She tried it with that baby hook, the redshirt freshman out of France. Leslie Iso is for Koning, who's a sniper, and she shows it off. <laughs> got to put your hand up. You got to close out on her, especially because you know that she is hot from the three. Aislinn Koning, get a load of these numbers. 70 for 175 from deep coming into this game as Leslie is charged with a foul. Koning shooting an even 40% coming in. Kayla, she does not miss very often. It's just confidence. It's confidence and it's focus. When you're able to shoot like, like she's able to doing, it's... You're in a zone. That's not a lot of room, by the way, that Angsler was giving her. And Angsler's <laughs> bigger than she is, too. It's not a lot of room, Drew. Not at all. That's shooting from a bread box. And she still knocked it on. Manakahia splits the double free throw line jumper. That's too easy. That's what makes her such a good point guard. Splitting that defense, her timing, her patience, getting into the paint, boom, nails it. So NC State tries to break that press. The Wolfpack have lost back-to-back -back games after a 21-0 start. And now turnover number three as Crutchfield throws it away for Angsler. Drummond cannot leave her open. Bingo! That is pure for Syracuse, and the hot start continues. She's hot, Drew. She's hot. I don't think there's much more to say than you need to literally get your hands up on her. Drummond two for two from deep today after 24 points in six trays against Boston College last time out. NCAA tournament positioning on the line tonight. Maybe even a top four seed up for grabs. And Syracuse hot out of the gates on top 13-7 over NC State. Big reason why Miranda Drummond, who was scorching hot last time out against BC, she has not cooled down one bit tonight. Not at all, Drew. NC State has to put a hand up on her. I mean, even if you do put a hand up on her, she still has more than a 50% chance of making the shot. She's just fire from the three. 
Miranda Drummond, six points on two for two from deep. And last time out against Boston College, you see it, 24 points, a season high for Drummond. Her career high, by the way, is 38. So she's got a chance to go nuclear anytime she steps on the floor. If she keeps it up the way she's doing, I won't be surprised. Aislinn Koenig breaks the press for NC State, who has had some issues, three turnovers in the first five minutes. This time, though, Kanane gets it back on a nice feed, big to big, Rogers to Kanane. And in her first career start, the freshman's got her first bucket. Manakahia finds a wide open Engsler. She may be big, but she can stroke it. That time, though, she missed it. It's a good open shot by Engsler. She's going to need to take her shots. Keep shooting. Koning, you cannot give a single millimeter of breathing space. She already hit 1-3 right over the top of Engsler. This time, though, she defers. Kiara Leslie knocks it down from deep. And a good response by the Wolfpack after that timeout. You're not lying. It's a great shot, especially off the dribble. It's one of the toughest shots in basketball. Leslie on the board, NC State's leading score. Manakahia tries to respond. No dice off the left iron. Jaldi Tabdi tips the rebound after a scrum. Good hustle by the 6'5 Kanane. Wolfpack take it right back. NC State a chance for its first lead. Syracuse, by the way, one for its last five from three. Maybe settling a little bit. Leslie head down. Good give and go with Kanane, but Leslie lost the handle. Finds her own rebound. It looked like it did touch the rim, so that's not a travel. Rogers a little bit too strong for Kanane, who could not separate from Jaldi Tabdi. Looked like slow motion there as she tried to haul in that pass. That honestly was the perfect look. She had it. Just a little less force on the ball, and that could have been an easy bucket. Great look by Rogers, just a little less force. Dignis Almana checks back in for Syracuse along with Gabby Cooper, taking out Manakahia and Jaldi Tabdi. We get our first look at Kiara Lewis who's been playing really good basketball for Syracuse lately. Engsler tries it again, and that one's pure from the corner. Shooter, shoot. Shooter, shoot. That's a great shot by Engsler. She's confident. Regardless of the first miss, she's going to continue to shoot. Syracuse, as a team, three for seven from beyond the arc, just below 43%. Koning throws it right to Drummond, who's got her third steal tonight. Kick out to an open Cooper. Extra feed Lewis. Why not? Drummond, good hustle, but a little bit out of control. And regardless of, obviously, that shot, it's great ball movement by Syracuse. They're looking for each other. They're not trying to take each other one-on-one. -on -one. They, they may be pushing the ball up the court, but when the defense comes, they're looking to find open players. Koning matched up with Lewis. Aislinn Koning averaging 3.9 assists per game this season. That's tops on the team. She's a junior out of British Columbia on a team with a lot of North Carolina roots. Nearly pinned in the corner was Kayla Jones, who just checked in. Leslie, another three. That one's good, too. Kiara Leslie up to six points on back-to-back -back triples, and it's a one-point game again. Interesting that Kiara Leslie is shooting her way back into this game, Kayla. She started cold, but she has not hesitated. That's what both of these teams are capable of doing, especially for Leslie. You know, being able to play at such a top-notch team and top-notch level, shooting the ball and staying consistent is in the key. Drummond, head of steam, a little bit out of control again, this time with the rock in her hands, and she charges right through the Wolfpack. A foul against Syracuse. Uh, just Drummond, good aggression. A little too much, right? Great defense by NC State. You know, they were in the positions. It's all about getting outside of that circle now is huge, especially, too, because if, if you're inside, it's going to be a blocking call. It's great defense by NC State. That's Drummond's second personal. She's got both fouls for Syracuse tonight, so she takes a seat. So we come down the home stretch in the first quarter. Cooper watching Koenig tightly. Stroutman and Kanane fighting for position down low, and that's too easy for the 6'5 Kanane. NC State finally gets that one. They had that look earlier, and now she was able to not overthrow it and get it to, get it to her in the right, right position. That is just the second lead all day for NC State. First one since 21 seconds into the game, and Engsler cannot knock down the three. So Koenig starts the Wolfpack in transition again. Syracuse falls into the 2-3 zone. Stroutman picks up Kanane on the block. Jones cannot find the floater in the lane. Manakahia with the rebound. She's like Russell Westbrook. Watch her fly. Good feed for Lewis. Can't hit the bunny. And Syracuse's drought continues. Manakahia is so great at that no-look pass. If you watch her play, that's one of her favorite passes, is not even looking at it, and she does it so well. That was saucy. <laughs> You like the no-look feed. That was, that was awesome. It looks good. Syracuse, by the way, scoreless now for more than two minutes, and NC State has taken advantage out in front by one. Leslie, hand in the face, does not matter. Another mid-range jumper for Leslie, who all of a sudden is blistering. Eight points. Straumana out in front of the pack. Good find by Manakahia. Good patience by Straumana, but cannot hit the layup. 
NC State has to recognize Syracuse wants to push the ball up the floor. They said that earlier in the game. Coach Q was talking about really emphasizing moving the ball, pushing it up the floor, getting early transition baskets. Coach Quentin Hillsman was not surprised his team was outside the top 16. And then Westmore, you see him right there. He said that press is going to be a monster to break. And they are struggling with depth right now, Kayla. He told us that this morning. They've lost three of their key contributors. So against a press for 40 minutes, that's tough. Yeah, you have to be patient. You really have to let the defense come to you. can't. NC State has been overthrowing a lot of the middle look passes. They have to take their time. Pass fakes are going to be important. Wolfpack are hot right now on a 7-0 run. And Manakahia shots blocked by Leslie. Finkley was strong earlier. That time it just rims and out, in and out off every inch of the iron. Leslie out to Koning. No hesitation. She can't get it to fall either in and out. And Syracuse has not scored in nearly four minutes. Can Cooper break the drought? No, she cannot. Too strong. NC State with about two seconds of differential between shot and game clock should slow it down. SU is one of its last ten from the floor. NC State on that 7 nothing run. They've knocked down three of their last four triples. What do you think they go to here? Taking the time, using the shot clock, trying to get a last second shot. An easy basket. Leslie has been unconscious with the jump shot. Crossover, that's a long two. Missed it. Syracuse rebound to Finkley. Monacahi has got a second. Oh, nearly knocked it down from behind half court. Tiana cannot drill it, though, in Syracuse. Ice cold to end the first half. NC State takes advantage. A 7-0 run as we go to the second quarter on Doggy Day at the Carrier Dome. A couple of high-profile teams and some high-profile animals as well. 1960 at NC State leads. NC State's ACC best defense suffocating Syracuse down the stretch of the first quarter. Wolfpack take advantage. They lead 19-16 as we begin the second. And a big reason why, as always, is Kiara Leslie, NC State's leading scorer. She's got that jumper working tonight, Taylor. She's incredible. You know, she's really consistent, being able to get a good grip on the ball, take her time. And if you watch, she holds her shot. She holds her shot, and she's able to just find her rhythm, and that's what she's doing. She is a confident scorer, no hesitation. She's only three for eight from the floor. Like you see, she missed her first few, but she stayed confident, and that's the key. Syracuse is going to continue to lock down, even key in on her more, so coming out of this timeout. So NC State starts with a ball out of the break. The Wolfpack have used their starting five for the majority of this game already. They are losing some depth. In fact, last time out, Erica Cassell injured her knee. She's now out for the season. Kayla Ely also on the shelf who was expected to be their starting point guard. She was last year. And Grace Hunter, who was their leading scorer to begin ACC play, is also out for the year. So Leslie has taken a lot of that load on her shoulders. That time she missed, but she stays aggressive again. Monacahia left alone in transition. Not a good idea for NC State. She was due for one, and that's her shot. Coming off of the dribble, pull up, Jay. NC State has to recognize she's going to be taking those. And Westmore, when we talked with him earlier today, Kayla said, I don't even know how to say her name, but you know she's a threat. Tiana Monacahia is very, very good. I don't know if Tiana Monacahia knows how to say her name. <laughs> Monacahia, five syllables, out of Brisbane, Australia. But she states it, I'll tell you that much. First shot for Jada Rice, just checked into the game to begin the second quarter, is no good from the post. Lewis has a free lane, nice crossover, splits the double, but missed the layup again. And now NC State. Gets the ball back after maybe a frustration foul by Syracuse. Monacahi has only scored five points now in her last two games, Kayla. She's back to five now, early second quarter. Again, just like Leslie, not letting those missed shots get to her head. Right. She's such a dominant scorer, but the best part about a point guard and what, they, what point guards do is getting her teammates the ball. So regardless if she has five points or three points, her job is to read the defense and give what they take. Case in point, last time out against Boston College, 12 assists. So she stays involved facilitating. NC State ball in the left side. Syracuse, by the way, just snapped that nearly five-minute scoreless drought on Manakahia's three. Koning with the step back. That is sweet. Woo. That jump shot right there and her confidence into that jump shot says it all. Syracuse not only has to put a contested hand up on her, but has to recognize she's going to be one to take it off the dribble. With a step back three, that's James Harden-esque, too, for Koning. Entry feed for Finkley, muscular against Rice, and she walked. Bigger pardon against Jones. Good defense by NC State's Kayla Jones. Check out Aislinn Koning, though, Kayla, with the step back. I mean, this is just spicy. Right, she gives a little jab set, gets the defender off of her feet. That one little jab set will do it. 
No one picks up Kai Crutchfield. Baby Crush, no good on the three from the wing. That would have been a big time shot for the Wolfpack, leading by three. Manakahia rips away the loose ball. Here comes Gianna, barking out instructions. Calls for the screen from Finkley. Nothing there. Stratmana is left alone. Straight away, good on the three. It's a great setup by Tiana Manakahia, being able to create, get into that gap, read the defense, and kick out to Stratmana. Awesome job. First bucket for Stratmana on her third three. Here's Jones at the top. Brandy Fowler nearly picked off the pass, but a good recovery from the Wolfpack. Leslie, who's already taken those nine shots, this time defers. Jones, three no good from the corner. And a foul is called by our official down there. That's Daryl Humphrey, who calls it in a guilty party for Syracuse. Is Marie Paul Faposi. So we're tied at 22 and Kayla. This is just what we expected. Two very evenly matched teams in the dome. Evenly matched teams and even, evenly matched three-point attempts. I mean, these guys are coming down, launching them. Koning has those two threes on the three attempts. Not going to shoot a whole lot from inside the arc, but when she gets outside the arc, she is lethal. Kai Crutchfield, the sophomore in the starting lineup. Down low for the freshman starting tonight. Elisa Kanane cannot connect. Good defense from Finkley. Here comes Manakahia out in front for Drummond. No on the finish in transition. That's a few bunnies tonight, Kayla, that Syracuse has missed. All you have to do is slow down, take your time. That was a great hustle play by Drummond. Didn't even need the dribble, but just slow it down a bit. She's able to finish that. Jones might have rushed that shot from the elbow, and here comes Syracuse. Second quarter moving quickly past three minutes in, still tied up at 22. This is the 10th meeting all time between Syracuse and NC State. Wolfpack lead at 5-4. to four. In fact, last year in Raleigh, they snapped a four-game losing streak against the Orange. So Syracuse looking to level up that series at five wins apiece. Drummond around a screen, back for Stroutman. A five to shoot for the Cues. Stroutman finds no one, and the call is a charge. We call that OOC, out of control. It's a good <laughs> play, a really good play. Good idea by Stroutman, but when she leaves her feet, you're out of options. You need to come to a jump stop position because even if you're not able to get that pass, you can still use your pivot foot to kick it back out. And a good defensive play by Kayla Jones right in front of the official Brian Burnett, so he saw it from a couple of feet away. Kanane out of her element at the three-point arc. Koning is right at home. She thought that one was down. She was running back already. Just missed it off the front iron. Here's Manakahia. Might have forced that one to Drummond, and it's a takeaway for Crutchfield. NC State's defense is nasty, allowing barely 55 points per game this year. Tops in the ACC. Opponents shooting 34% as well. One of the best marks in the entire country. Kanane down low for Rodgers as they try to break through that zone with big to big, high to low, and it works as Rodgers finishes. It's great patience by NC State. Not allowing, to, not forcing anything, moving the ball too quickly, but getting inside to the paint to break up the defense for a nice easy layer. NC State back in the driver's seat. Syracuse led for the majority of that first quarter. Stratman tries to give it right back to him, and she cans it free. Drew, that's her spot. That's her spot, and that's her shot. She'll hit another time. Syracuse leading for the first time since about two and a half minutes left in the first quarter, but right on cue, Elisa Kanane out of control maybe, OOC like you said, Kayla, but she hits the circus layup and one. Jabdi Tavi tried to get there. She's, you can see she tried to hustle move over, but you can't move on that play. You're a little late on that. At that point, you just want to put your hands up and not try to get that contact. That's a great offensive play by NC State. Alyssa Kanane at the free throw line. She is very aggressive. She's home at the stripe. Get a load of this number, Kayla. Alyssa Kanane, fifth in the ACC coming into tonight's game in free throws attempted with 112, and she knocks down 113. Everyone else inside the top five, Kanane's number five. Everyone else has played more than 800 minutes coming into tonight. Kanane has played less than 500. So when she's on the floor, she's going to the line. And she's confident as a freshman. It's an unbelievable thing to do when you come in here from high school being as confident as she is and doing what she's doing. Stroutman is three, trying to make it back-to-back -back trips with one. No dice, Jaldi Tabdi. Good rip by Kanane. And it's taken away by NC State as the defense flexing its muscle a little. Crutchfield for Jones at the top. Syracuse back in that 2-3 zone, which the Wolfpack were practicing for today at shoot-around. Rocking the baby as Leslie missed the three. Kanane's bigger than everyone, and she forces the rebound. 
to her teammate Rogers. Leslie all the way to the basket, and she stays aggressive after the miss. Second time's the charm on that trip down the floor. It's great offensive play by Leslie, getting into the paint, but not taking it the first time, using a little pump fake to get Kira, him off the feet. Kiera Leslie, the first player in double figures today with 10, and the Wolfpack going right into the teeth of that 2-3 zone. 14 points in the paint. Syracuse struggling. Dignus Stroutman, though, keeping the orange in the game. Syracuse still trailing by four. But Dignus Stroutman, the Latvian sophomore for Syracuse, has a couple of triples, and the Orange only trail by four points. Not sure how this is possible, but tickets are still on sale for Syracuse's women's basketball game against national powerhouse and the reigning champs, Notre Dame, on February 25th. Purchase tickets help break that all-time attendance record for an SU women's basketball game. Tickets only $10 for single seats, $5 each for groups of 15 or more, and a special corporate package of 500 tickets for two bucks each. Call 888-DOME-TICKS or visit Cuse.com and purchase your tickets now. And some of the stars in that game, Arike Ogumbawale, who became a national superstar in the NCAA tournament last year against Tiana Munakahia. Should be a good battle at the Dome later this month. It is a great battle, really good matchup. I love the way both point guards play. They're both fearless, being able to get into that point, and they also play with edge. There's Tiana Manakahia for Syracuse. Five points tonight with four boards and three assists. So don't look now, but she might be on triple double watch again. She didn't earlier this year. Five, four, and three with four minutes left in the second quarter. That never Maybe. ceases to surprise us. Maybe. Kai Crutchfield on the ball for NC State. Wolfpack have put the clamps on defensively against Syracuse and a great feed. Jones to Rogers, right to the cup, leading her to the promised land. Eight points for D.D. Rogers, only three off a season high. Great. Great look by Jones. She's able to just be patient with that, looking at that backdoor cut and nails it. Gabrielle Cooper enters a feed for Dignus Straubman, who's been hot from outside, and she works inside as well. That's in the scouting report for Dignus Straubman, back when she was a five-star recruit a couple of years ago. She can go outside, she can go inside. Jones all the way to the basket. Cooper takes it away on the missed shot. Monacahi, a quick feed. Engsler, the ball doesn't stick anywhere, and it pays off. Engsler, second triple of the night. Syracuse is one point away from being back in the driver's seat. And the Orange fading away now from that full court press. And it looks like they're going back to man, Kayla, but right on cue, I think they just switched back to zone. Right, it's, they're kind of allowing NC, or not allowing NC State to read what they're doing. Every coach says a great zone looks like a man. Kanane finds the offensive board, fouled on her way up. So she's going back to the line. She's one for one tonight. A free throw line, Maven, the freshman, Elisa Kanane. But by the way, Kayla, going back to what we were saying about Notre Dame, how that's a crucial game for Syracuse. Notre Dame, as those defending national champs, not on the one line right now for the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee. We'll talk with ESPN bracketologist Charlie Cream about that coming up at halftime. You do not want to miss that conversation. It's everyone's game at this point. You know, we talk about polls, we talk about rankings, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really about who shows up that game, and any one of these teams can get these wins. Notre Dame already with those two losses. That's why they're not on the one line. So they're going to come in hungry to the Dome on February 25th. Elisa Kinane now three for three at the stripe tonight. The six foot five freshman out of Summerfield, North Carolina, coming in above 72% on the season. Stroutman might have forced it against three players from the Wolfpack. That might be a bit of an aggressive shot, maybe too aggressive. When you have three players come up on you like that, all you have to do is grab, take your time, come to a jump shot. She had Cooper, excuse me, Drummond wide open on the left side for a three, and you know you want to get that ball to Drummond for a three. But NC State gives it right back on the turnover. Six turnovers apiece tonight. Syracuse, a team that really forces the issue with the press and the zone and a lot of pressure. Manakahia with the fancy move and the no-look feed. Three on the way from Raven. Fox missed everything. Pass like that deserved an assist, Kayla. What do you think? Manakahia, that's her move. That's her go-to. She loves the no-look. It, it gets me just looking at her. You know, she's really great and crafty in her offensive play. But Drummond forces another turnover. Miranda Drummond has been pesky in the backboard. Two steals already, and she's forced a couple of more giveaways. Lewis with two and a half to play in the second quarter. Feeds Monica here. Leslie picks her up. Hard hedge by Kanane. Fox left alone after missing that three. Back to Monica here. Now Syracuse content to milk a little bit. Monica corkscrew. Back out to Fox. That jumper is no good either. And Leslie finds the board for NC State. 
What did the Wolfpack do on defense that makes them so good there? They're able to just anticipate where Manakahia goes. I mean, obviously you can't read every move that she's doing, but they know that she's the type of player that loves to drive and get into the paint. They want to gap help, but also be able to recover to their player. Drummond forces another deflection, but NC State corrals it. Kanane, again, taller than everyone, and sometimes that's all it takes. Elisa Kanane, in her first career start, has cracked double figures. She's got 11 points already to lead all scores. This is Lewis on the wing in Syracuse. Trying to find some rhythm offensively, just 6 for 20 from the floor, 30%. They've only got 30 points. Kayla, this is a team that averages more than 77 per game, third most in the ACC. They've had a little bit of a rocky road, especially in mid-season play, but being able to shoot <laughs> Exhibit A is going to be a, it's going to be the difference maker in terms of wins and losses here. That helps from Raven Fox and Monacahia, another pest in the backcourt, just like Drummond. So Syracuse has only forced NC State to cough it up seven times, which might be a little below their pace for their season average, forcing 19 turnovers per game. But they're getting a lot of those deflections and passing lines. That's what it's about, too, keeping your hands high, not necessarily going for the steal every time. I mean, look at Miranda Drummond. She's on a roll. Drummond is fired up. She has been everywhere defensively forced that turnover by Leslie. You would think she's only a three-point shooter. No, no. She's got, she's got her game on defense with high hands. And notice how she's not going for steals. She's just being disciplined on defense. And that's actually how you get steals. Oh. Monica here, Rondo-esque move out to Lewis. Step back at the free throw line. You bet. Soft touch off the back of the rim and it falls. Took the words out of my mouth, too. That Rondo move was awesome. I know you like that Boston Celtics <laughs> stuff. Syracuse is back within one, 35-34. Kanane with 11 points. She has been a monster offensively, but this time dribbles it off her foot. Good defense from Maeva Jaldi Tabdi for Syracuse, who just checked into the game, and Wes Moore is furious on the NC State sideline. Jaldi Tabdi also, you know, prior to this move, you saw her take or get that foul earlier on in the game, and she was able to make the adjustment, realizing, okay, that my feet are here, I'm disciplined, my hands are high, and if she does that, this is what happens. Syracuse with about three, four seconds between shot and game clock will let it bleed. Monica here talks with her head coach, Quentin Hillsman, who's standing on the sideline as tranquil as ever. Monica here barks out the instructions like an air traffic controller. Three screens at the top of the key, Fraser up, and she knocks it down. Tiana Monica here gives Syracuse the lead, maybe as we go to the break. Koning has one last chance, did not get it away. It will not count. She buried it. Oh, my goodness. But it was after the light went off on the buzzer. So take a deep breath. Trying to respond to Monica. He has three. Koning does not get it off in time. Wes Moore a little bit disappointed with that result. And Syracuse takes a two-point lead into half. It is a point guard showdown, at least within these last 10 seconds. If she got that off just a second earlier, I mean, she would have hit it. And just unbelievable by the point guard. Well, I don't think that one was 12 feet off the ground. I mean, that was a line drive missile right to the back of the rim, and she, she nailed it. That's That's got to count for something. Basketball players love it. They love just being able to knock down shots, not even thinking about it. All right, so the shot does not count from Koning, and Syracuse leads by two, 37-35. The Orange closed the second quarter on a 7-0 run after the Wolfpack did that in the first quarter. Number 16, Syracuse, out in front of number 12, NC State. Charlie Creams coming up on the other side. Stick around. Syracuse closes the second quarter on a 7-0 run, and the Orange back in the driver's seat as they go to the locker room at halftime. It is Syracuse 37, NC State 35. Back inside the Loud House, everybody, I'm Drew Carter alongside former Lehigh basketball player Kayla Burton and Syracuse and NC State. Kayla kind of went back and forth in those opening 20. It's a great matchup. It's a back and forth matchup. Threes are launching from both sides of the floor. NC State barely was able to get that when they, for, um, thankfully for Syracuse, that the ball didn't go in, but again, Anywhere behind the arc is going to most likely go in, by the way, the both teams are shooting. Yeah, these are two of the better teams in the ACC and in the entire country, and it started off with NC State's leading score, establishing her dominance. Kira Leslie had that jumper working tonight. Notice how she just takes her time off the dribble, gets the defender off of her feet. This one's a quick release, but regardless, her patience is, a, is what she's so good at and able to get her shots. Leslie averaging more than 18 points per game in her last nine, and then Elisa Kanane, the freshman, making her first career start 
in the absence of an injured forward, and she's been awesome as well. A dominant player right there, fearless of being a freshman, being able to put the ball in the net. Start for Kanane after Erica Cassell went down in their last time out, but Syracuse has been hot from distance. Miranda Drummond knocked down a couple. Digna Stratman got involved too. Syracuse is five for seven in the threes, just in the second quarter alone. NC State is going to have to make adjustments knowing that these guys are going to continue to shoot, and they're shooting the ball pretty well. McCuse loves to chuck eight for 17 from beyond the arc, and NC State nearly hit three number five there from Aislinn Koning, their junior point guard. That was about as close as you could get. And Syracuse and NC State, we said it pretty evenly matched, Kayla. These are two teams whose all-time series is 5-4 in favor of the Wolfpack. Look at the stats, what stands out to you? This is why the game is a two-point game already. I mean, Syracuse right now is shooting the ball 40% from the field, 8 for 17 from the three. But then you look at NC State's side of things, and they have 18 points in the paint. And you can tell, by the way, NC State brings down the ball every single time. The point guards are doing a great job getting into the paint and feeding the ball to the players. Syracuse holding a two-point lead over NC State. Come back for the third and fourth quarter. Big time tournament implications tonight between the Orange and the Wolfpack. Buckle those seat belts. We have got a massive second half in store for you at the Carrier Dome. Syracuse holding a two-point lead over NC State, number 16 Orange. Number 12 Wolfpack, two teams jostling for NCAA tournament positioning right now. We showed you this earlier. The Wolfpack right now on the two-line, according to the selection committee. Syracuse on the outside looking in. And if in case you forgot, here's our little refresher for you. The top 16 teams, according to the NCAA Selection Committee, you notice Syracuse isn't in. Kayla, this is a massive game for the Orange tonight. And both teams are playing like it. I mean, obviously, this is why the game is so close. They're hungry for this win. They know how important this win is. Each team is looking to get a good seed by the end of this. And the Orange start with the ball. Head coach Quentin Hillsman in his 13th season with Syracuse a few years ago took that team all the way to the national championship as a four seed. So if they get in, who knows what could happen. Tiana Manakahi is speaking of four, starts with a ball for the Qs. Entry feed for Finkley from Straumana, lefty finish, no good. Good defense from Kanane, who was outstanding in that first half, the freshman. Aislinn Koning does not miss very often from deep. So run the show for the Wolfpack, the junior point guard. Didi Rogers with eight points in the first half. Entry feed for Kanane, who's already in double figures through contact, might have taken a shot to the arm from Finkley, but no call. Watch Cuse as they go back down on defense next time. All of their hands are high and up. That's great discipline defense. Little, not great offense, yeah, though. Not, not, on, <laughs> not discipline on offense, as Finkley is called for the illegal screen. And Kiera Leslie draws the foul, goes right to the deck. NC State struggling to score, scoreless in their last two and a half minutes of play. It was a 7 nothing run to end the first half for the Orange. And this is the press they're talking about. That middle player has to be there for the point guard. Every point guard's fear is not having a middle person in the middle. It's Le there. Leslie with a good between the legs dribble, and then the feed for Kanane, who gives it back out to Rogers. Half the shot clock on as Koning steadies the troop. No look feet alone in the corner is Leslie, and she rips the Nats again. Summer and Drummond get completely lost there, seeing where'd the ball go. And that's that 2 3 zone that NC State was prepared for today. Monacahia missed it on the wing three. Rebound to Kanane. Good hustle, plus being six foot five doesn't hurt. Leslie's going to pull the trigger one more time and can it one more time as well. She's on fire, and that's just what we love to see when players are confident, like Leslie is, like Monacahi is, just letting the ball fly, not thinking twice about it. Kiera Leslie leading all scores with 16 points tonight. Only other player in double figures, her teammate, Elisa Kanane. Monacahi out to Drummond. She's got the hot hand, too, and she shows it off. We said, Drew, it's a three-point showdown. This is long-range artillery from both sides. Leslie is blistering right now. Watch her go. Kanane gets it right back out to the perimeter. Koning, she doesn't miss very often, but that time too short. And take a deep breath. Tiana Manakahia, you said it, Kayla. The no-look pass is her specialty. Puts it on a platter for Drummond. Syracuse moving quickly in transition. Finkley missed everything with the layup. Koning's got it for the Wolfpack. Little over two minutes into the second quarter. Leslie being double teamed and pinched by the zone. Rogers good plus the foul. She's into double figures as well. A chance to match her season high with the free throw. That's just a great move by both players. Being patient on that offense. You can see, she's just putting the ball up, letting the defender step out to her, getting it inside, using body contact for a great finish by Rogers. Both of them together, that's great teamwork. 
Dee Dee Rogers is up to 10 points. Five for five from the floor, and she has now tied her career high with 11 points. Has not missed from anywhere. What a game for the senior forward. Manakahi into the front court. Quick pull up around the screen. You bet. That has to be one of the toughest shots in basketball. Let me tell you, when you are coming off, not only off the dribble, but coming off of that screen with all, with all the defenders there, and even your offensive play there, it's just a lot going on. And listen, if you're the defense, how do you defend that? Because if you go under the screen, she'll knock it down like we just saw. But if you try to go over, she'll get a step, and then you're, to you're toast because she'll find someone else. Sure, I think you answered it yourself. That's why she's as good as, that's why she's as, good as she is. If you go over, she's dry, driving. If you go under, it's popping. But Kanane has the size on Stroutman. A good recovery, though, by Syracuse's sophomore. And here come the orange. Let's see if they set it up again. Finkley sets the screen. Manakahia thought about the pull-up. Man, that is nasty with the crossover dribble. That Entry. nice high to low pass right there. That was awesome. Just Manakahia being able to get into the paint but kick it back out to the top. That's a look that most coaches love to see is that high to low. Leslie thought about the triple. Instead, of Syracuse falls into the 2-3 zone. Wolfpack work it around. Drummond with another takeaway. Her third steal today. No one else on Syracuse even has one. Cooper with a fancy Euro step Euro. and the finish. Great Euro step by Cooper. Syracuse moving it in transition, and they're back out in front by one. Lead change number eight. Already we're midway through the third quarter. This is fun. Rogers trying to get her career high. Missed it. Kanane's there on the cleanup, and she's got 13 points. Second chance shots for both teams is what you have to eliminate. That's what's going to push you over the edge to get these wins. You might have seen their rebounds in favor of NC State, 28 to 21. This is the best rebounding team in the entire ACC. They out-rebound their opponents by an average of more than 11 per game. Stroutman all alone, straightaway triple is pure again. Look at how she sets her feet. Next time you watch her shoot, her feet are set. She's taking her time. Her body isn't moving left to right. That's why she's hitting. She's so consistent, and her body language is telling. By the way, how did it start? Manakahia draws the double, sucks in the defense, and Stroudman has no one in her zip code. Call her quarterback. Manakahia has up to seven assists with 11 points and four boards. NC State has the answer. It's Koenig once again. Ace Koning is up to nine points, all of them on threes. Drummond puts oh. her head down, missed it all. No foul call against Kanane. Good job staying straight up. Here's Kai Crutchfield. Stroudman all up in the business of Koning. But no one guards Rogers. Her three, no good. Off the front of the rim and backboard. Here comes Manakahia. Approaching the halfway mark in the third quarter, these teams trading punches like heavyweight fighters. Manakahia with the scoop, can't fall. Coning the board for NC State. It's a good drive by Monica. If you look at how she uses her height and speed, she uses her hesitation move, gets her defender up, wasn't able to finish, needs to slow down, take her time with that, but really good change of height and speed there. Coach Quentin Helsman has shepherded three players to the scores table as Syracuse will make nearly a wholesale change after the missed layup by Kiara Leslie. Four players now set to check in for the Cuse. Monica, a <laughs> fancy feed from Binkley who knocks it down <laughs> plus the harm. That is just good basketball right there. Tiana Monica here on pace for yet another double-double. Wes Moore says, how do we stop number four in white and orange? Monica here, check out the pass to Amaya Finkley after the three by Monica here, trading punches with Koning. We've got a high-quality game at the Dome. We knew it would be a battle of the point guards tonight at the Kome. Battle of the guards, it has been indeed. Kiara Leslie for NC State leading all scores with 16 points, and her jumper has been smooth and sizzling. On the Syracuse side, their leading score and their leading assister, their leading basically everything is Tiana Manakahia. She's doing it again tonight on track for another double-double with 11 points and 8 assists. 11 points tied for the team lead for Syracuse. Drew Carter back with Caleb Burton on ACC Network Extra. Syracuse against NC State, two teams in the hunt for top four seeds in the NCAA tournament. Amaya Finkley knocked down her layup before we went to a break. Gets the and one to go as well as she was fouled in the act of shooting. And now she'll hit the bench. So a platoon style change for Coach Quinton Hillsman. What do you think of that? All five players on the floor are new. It's really great offense and just being able to put, pair each of these players together and moving the ball. Their ball movement on, offense, on the offensive side of the court is just phenomenal. It's telling. NC State keeps its five the same. 
with the exception of Kayla Jones, number 25, in your near side corner at the bottom of the screen. This is D.D. Rogers through contact, plus the foul. Another and one for D.D. Rogers, up to 13 points tonight. There's your career high for the senior forward. Watch this. Through the double team. Yeah, that's a great call. The contact. That's a great call by the refs because Maeva, she was moving as she was, you know, trying to get planned, but wasn't able to get there in time. Rogers does miss the free throw. First shot she's missed of any kind tonight. Kira Lewis quickly in transition, throws on the spin cycle. What's the call from Brian Solkowski? Hey, you know what? I love this move right here by Lewis. Look at that. She's, it's, it's swag. It's being confident. Maybe not the right move. She went right into the defender, so you have to know where you're going. She got the call, but her swag and her fierceness, just being able to get into the paint, awesome. Lewis knocks down the free throw to put Syracuse back out in front. The foul was against Kiara Leslie, who might have been in the restricted area. Lewis good, a second free throw as well. So even though her eyesight might be a little impaired with that bandage over her left eye, she still hits both oh, wow. free throws. And now Gabrielle Cooper with a takeaway for Syracuse as that press pays dividends again. And this is when momentum shifts can happen. NC State needs to calm down and realize that you know, offensively, especially taking the ball out of bounds, you can't make these types of turnovers, especially in the second half when the game is on the line. This is Lewis, who's been playing great basketball lately. This time, no on the leaner in the lane. NC State two on two. Leslie with Koning riding shotgun. Leslie goes all the way to the cup, is fouled, can't connect, but she's got two free throws. Kira Leslie wastes no time, Kayla. Look at her. Hit the gas. She is not even thinking twice. That's the greatest thing. When players are able to play free, not worrying about necessarily setting up the offense all the time, but just taking the ball and go. We talked to Coach Moore prior to this game, and he said, I want these guys to go. We may play a slower game than Syracuse, but if they got the ball in transition and can push, go. And it's interesting because you talk with Coach Moore, as Leslie's good, she splits a pair of free throws. Syracuse plays the fastest pace in the ACC if you go in terms of possessions per game. NC State is third from the bottom, but he says his team is comfortable playing that fast pace. It's good for them to be able to switch up both. Jaldi Tabdi barely missed it hard off the window. Here come the Wolfpack. Down by one, NC State and Syracuse. Two teams could be eligible for top four seats in the NCAA tournament. Right now, NC State on the two line. Syracuse on the outside looking in for the top four. Emily Angsler playing like it. She knows this is a big time game. Number 21 in white and orange forces the jump ball. I love that. After the ball, Angsler just holds on to it. After the call, she goes, I don't care when this whistle blows. If it does, if it doesn't, this ball is mine. That's the type of mindset you have to have when playing this game. She plays through the whistle from the officials. NC State does keep it, but the arrow flips back to Syracuse. Leslie trapped in the corner by Lewis and Angsler. It'll stay here, though, with the Wolfpack. Kiara Lewis and Kiara Leslie both on the floor. A little bit confusing. In fact, Coach Westmore was saying earlier today that with Kai Crutchfield, Kiara Leslie, who he calls Key, and Kayla Jones, sometimes it can get a little confusing for NC State. Every team has that problem, and you got to just have those nicknames ready. Speaking of tough names, Tiana Monacahia checks back into the game, taking out Isis Young. This is Ace Koning, 1v1, point guard v point guard. Two to shoot for NC State. Engsler with the swat and the shot clock violation. Great defense. It started with Tiana Monacahia. I mean, just being disciplined. A lot of players on de defensively will leave their feet off of the hesitation dribble, but she stayed disciplined, which allowed Engsler to get that steal as well. Emily Angsler has made a habit of blocking three-point attempts, which you do not see very often. Five-star recruit, a top 10 recruit out of the city, the highest-rated recruit in Syracuse program history. Shovels it out for Jaldi Tabdi. Her 18-footer from straightaway is a little too strong. Here comes NC State. Koning will slow it down right on top of that carrier logo, hearing it from her coach, Westmore. This is Leslie. Now Jones, entry for the elbow, and Rogers, Kanane above the trees, lost it. The foul is on the ground by our official. That's Ed Soloski who makes the call. And Kanane took a lot of contact, and the foul is called on the deck as Angsler came flying in. So she took one to the cheek, and then Kanane went to the ground herself. She lost a little bit of her body control coming down. But again, great job by Angsler, just defensively being able to lock in, getting her hands up. That one, she was a little off balance, but the mindset to just stop the play, stop the ball, that's awesome.
Elisa Kane now four for four at the stripe. 13, beg your pardon, 14 points, and make it 15 with those two free throws. And nine rebounds, so double-double watch for the freshman out of Summerfield, North Carolina. NC State is a team that likes to keep it in-house when they're recruiting. Eight players on the Wolfpack are from their home state. Meanwhile, for Syracuse, just three from New York State. One of them is Emily Angsler, who's from Queens, New York. Lefty hook, no. Jones, the rebound for the Wolfpack. She gives it off to Aislinn Koning. Here's Kiara Leslie leading all scores today with those 16 points. Denied by Angsler. Two blocks in a span of two minutes for the freshman who shakes her head on her way back down the floor saying, don't go in there. Manakahia quickly to the basket, wasting no time, and she's fouled on her way up. I don't know what the message Coach Q gave to Angsler, but it is clearly working. Her discipline on defense is phenomenal. I mean, as you can see, she just beats the player not even going down. Most players are get, get caught with the fouls by going down with their arms. She keeps it high just enough to get the block. Manakahia's first free throw is good. She's up to 12 points tonight to go with her eight assists and five boards. Angsler gets a well-deserved breather as well as Maeva Jaldi Tabdi. That defense, by the way, Kayla, from Angsler was textbook. She didn't jump when she didn't need to. She just kept that arm up, like you said. And as a result, her team is back out in front, 55 to 54. Great discipline. And Syracuse sets up that press again. Cooper took a spill, so Koning tries to take advantage. Missed it too short on the three from the wing. Great hustle from Rogers, who almost turned an ankle going to the bench. Leslie will reset for NC State. Jones trying to find Rogers, already with a career-high 13. She's fouled again. She'll go back to the strike for two more. And this is a point Coach Moore emphasized prior to this game was one of the keys is working the ball inside, getting, getting into the gap in order to split up the zone so the defenders can collapse and they can kick out the ball or take it to the rim. Rogers' first free throw is good, make it 14 points for the senior forward. Coming in her career high in scoring was 11. She had done it twice, including once this year against Clemson earlier in ACC play. Second free throw swirls out, so she splits a pair. Finkley, the center, that wants nothing to do with bringing the ball across the timeline, <laughs> so she gives it to Monacahi and sets a screen. Tiana floats it inside for Finkley. Dream shake, no, on the lefty layup. Lewis tried to pull it down, and she does on the second effort. Straumann has had the hot hand tonight. Gives it off to Finkley at the free throw line. Back to Digna. Here's Monacahia. Tiana Lewis, will slow it down. See Lewis grab that rebound. That's just grit. That is grit being able to, small as she is, to trump and get that rebound. Kiara Lewis only 5'8". They just pulled down the offensive board, and Syracuse has another chance as a result. Seven to shoot for Manakahia to the cup, left alone, and that's too easy. Finishes with her right. That's a tough shot. She the, jumped off her right foot, too. You're on the left side, finishing with your right, with the angle she had. Uh, that's not easy. Kanane finds an open Leslie. Good recovery <laughs> by Syracuse. It doesn't matter. Like The Rock says, it doesn't matter if you recover. <laughs> Leslie is up to 19 points, still leading all scorers. 16 lead changes tonight. We're still in the third quarter. Syracuse has a chance to make that lead switch one more time. They'll take the last shot. Manakahia content to bleed it down. Double screen. Manakahia jumps. The Hezzy out to Stroutman. One last chance. Missed everything on the three. And so Syracuse down by one going into the fourth. So you see Manakahia just heavily breathing on this one. Everyone's tired out here. Can't blame them, Syracuse and NC State. A marquee showdown at the Carrier Dome. Tiana Manakahia leading the troops for Syracuse. And for NC State, it's Kiara Leslie. Come back for an exciting fourth quarter. Point totals for Syracuse and NC State tonight in a marquee ACC battle. Look pretty similar. Wolfpack out in front by one, and it is still tight. But they've done it in different ways. Syracuse has eight different scores tonight, Kayla. NC State with just four. And you can just tell the difference between the depth of these two teams. Right now, Syracuse has, they have bench depth. Right now, they have 12 points just off of their bench to NC State's none. Coach Moore was talking about how that is a really big struggle for them. Only being able to play, what, five to seven players realistically with their main three players out. A foul on NC State on the floor. Kiara Leslie a little too aggressive with Tiana Manakahia, but Drew Carter back with Kayla Burton. Going back to what you were saying, Kayla, Westmore told us today, it is hard when you've lost two of your best players to injuries. They lost their starting point guard, Kayla Ely, to a knee injury before the season even began as Leslie swats Manakahia on the three attempt. 
Then, earlier this year, they lost Grace Hunter, who was their leading scorer at the time, mm -hmm. also to a knee injury. She's on the shelf for the season. Then we learned tonight, Erica Cassell, their starting forward, also out for the year, also with a knee injury. So the fact that NC State is still here despite those injuries is really remarkable. It defines their mental toughness. It's so hard for players, especially when you're playing the whole game. I mean, this, these are the top teams in the nation that we're talking about. And to be able to play as with much grit as these guys are playing, with as little bench depth that they have, it's not easy. Syracuse has shot the three ball early and often tonight. They made eight threes in the first half, like you saw. Gabrielle Cooper tries the first one in the fourth quarter, and she missed it. So NC State has a chance to strike first in the fourth. Dee Dee Rogers, who's had her best career game scoring-wise, missed the layup. But a savvy play by the freshman, Elisa Kinane, to whip it right off Tiana Monacay, who had nothing to do about it. I think you saw a little anger coming off of that one. Monacay tried to get that board. She said, excuse me, not going to happen. <laughs> Gets the ball right back. That's a play that if you do that on the playground, you're going to get some dirty <laughs> looks. But you might as well. This is, a, this is a massive game. And every possession counts. This is Kiara Leslie, NC State's leading scorer for the great season. Pass. And tonight, great ball movement by the Wolfpack. Rodgers down low to Kinane. Keeping the ball high, especially with post players, that's exactly what she needs to do in, in order to finish that shot. It was a great play. Leslie started it. Rodgers was the fulcrum, and Kinane the finisher. Monacahi has got the three. Ooh, rattled in and out. And the board goes to D.D. Rodgers. If you're an NC State defender on Monacahi, you have to go over her on screens. I mean, you're gonna, it's kind of a lose-lose because you know she's going to drive, but she can hit that shot. Rodgers with a good feed outside for Kayla Jones. Blow by on Stroutman. Koning far side for Leslie. See the rebounds there. NC State out rebounding the Cuse by 11 as Rogers, who's a beast on the glass, had it taken away. But the Wolfpack are doing what they do best, which is rebound. 11.3 is their average rebound margin. They're hitting that tonight. Manakahia out to Stratman. A no, too short on the straightaway three. But how about the offensive board by one of the smallest players on the floor? Five foot six, Tiana Manakahia. She's so good at that. As little as she is, you'd be surprised to see how many rebounds she gets per game. Coach Q screaming at Kiara Lewis to move. Manakahia right into the tree of Elisa Kanane, who's got about a foot in height on her. Six foot five, bodies up five foot six. And Manakahia a little bit gimpy will go to the stripe. You see number four in white. Watch all the contact here. That is a seismic collision on the block. She doesn't care. She is able to get in there, and that's her game. Matter of fact, she likes to drive more than she likes to shoot. It's unbelievable watching her play and being as crafty as she is getting into the paint and finishing at the rim. With a free throw, Manakahi has eclipsed her season average of 15 points per game, up to 16 now. And the Cuse going with a smaller lineup as Miranda Drummond checks in to take out Amaya Finkley. So the center will be the 6-2 Digna Straubana. But five out for the Qs maybe on offense. And on defense, they set up that full court press, a trademark of Coach Quentin Hillsman. Jones up top for Koning. Back to Kayla. The Orange back in the 2-3 zone. Straubana is the anchor. Now she switches off with Drummond. Lewis hand in the face. Syracuse extending that zone. Drummond matching up with D.D. Rogers and the foul on the floor. Now Miranda Drummond is only, she's six foot one, but Rogers does have a little bit of size on her. They're both listed at six foot one. But you see 32 in white may be a little smaller than 21 in red. Kanane, the biggest player on the floor, hands it off for Koning. NC State, a fresh 30 to work with. Kanane, the biggest player, she can stroke it too. Downtown, that, these wow. types of plays, that's, that's what you need is a three point possession a three-point play, excuse me, coming off of this is... <laughs> I can't even get response. my words up because Monica is going to answer. It's too fast to even say anything. <laughs> Monica knocks Forget down it. the triple after Elisa Kinane did the same on the other end. Two 20-point scores for the Wolfpack. They lead by one early in the fourth. NC State nursing a small lead over Syracuse at the Carrier Dome, and a big reason why is the freshman center, six foot five, Elisa Kinane, number 33 in red and white, coming off her best game of her career against Florida State. Another double double for Kinane, up to 20 and 10. She just flashed the stroke from outside the arc. Seeing her as a freshman coming in here, you have to remember, she's coming from high school. The best part about this, her mindset isn't like that. She doesn't look at herself like a freshman, she's leading this team. And for the freshman, Kinane, her first career double-double tonight. 25 and 8 in 31 minutes last time out against Florida State. But this is her first career start tonight. 
replacing the injured Erica Casella went down with a knee injury last time out in Tallahassee. Kanane wants some more and she's fouled on her way up. Angsler just checked into the game and she cannot believe that call as she thought she was straight up. Take a look at the replay. You think this is the right call? And uh, that's close. Uh, she came down on it last second. I think <laughs> I laugh because I remember my post player is always getting upset. But then when you watch film the next day, you realize you come down on it. She did drop her arms to an angle, so Kanane goes to the stripe. No surprise, her first free throw is pure. She's six of six at the line tonight. On the season, better than 72%. Here's a hoop scoop for you. Alyssa Kanane wants to be a veterinarian as her dream job. <laughs> she and can go right up into the stands and get one of these I was about to jobs. say, yeah, it's doggy day here at the Carrier Dome. That's why she's lighting it up. But here's the, the flip side of that, Kayla. The way she's playing right now, she might be a pro. So her dream job might have to be a pro basketball player because she's been a menace against Syracuse tonight. A steal for D.D. Rogers getting your hand in that passing lane. One-on-one -on -one with Monacahia. Good recovery by Syracuse's defense. Konings a sniper. Back to Rogers in the corner who is left alone. Driving baseline, and it's a body foul against the Cuse. You know what? That is a great play by Rogers. Going down baseline, a lot of people think you get trapped down there and you're not allowed to go, but you're... What these players are taught is to keep your dribble. I mean, she picked it up, but even jumping outside the lines to get that pass as the player goes and fills the other corner, that would have been a great play, but she got the foul call, so it went in her, went in her, her favor anyway. Coach Q opting for some extra size as he brings back Maeva Jaldi Tabdi in favor of Emily Angsler. This is Kiara Leslie leading all scores tonight, tied with Kane now with 20 points. The only two 20-point scorers on the floor are wearing red, but the Wolfpack have only seen four players score tonight. Leslie pulls the trigger straight away. No rebound goes to Jaldi Tabi right on cue as she checks in. Monacahia slicing through the lane out to Lewis. Open triple. No. Rogers soars for the rebound. Here come the Wolfpack. Drummond picks her up, and now Syracuse drops into that 2-3 zone, which the men's team is known for under Jim Beheim. They're playing in Raleigh right now against NC State. They just started at 8 o'clock. Rogers to the basket, and she got the layup to fall off the window. 16 points for D.D. Rogers. Her career high coming in was 11. 7 of 10 from the floor. She has shattered that mark. Stroutmana fires from the wing. No, too strong. Rebound to Leslie. Going back to Rogers' play, it was just great fundamental basketball right there, using her body, but also pivoting the ball to a place where the defender couldn't get it. That's why she was able to finish so well. At the free throw line, it's Rogers staying aggressive. Wild layup a little out of control. Manakahia finds the board. One on three, but here come reinforcements. Pulls up from the wing. Oh. Into Jaldi Tauji. How do you see that lane to throw it? Wow. You can't. There, you know what? Some people say you got to play better on defense, but that was just better offense right there. You can't stop that play. So Jaldi Tabdi with the bucket. That is her first two points of the day. So NC State has four scores, including Aislinn Koenig. Her shot might have been deflected by Lewis. Syracuse on the other side has 10 different scores and a big reason why number four in white and orange. Check out this pass, Kayla. Watch how Tiana just patiently uses her hesitation. Boom, no look pass. Right, Taeva. Awesome point guard skills right there. Tonight, a heavyweight battle at the Carrier Dome. Syracuse number 16 in the country against NC State. Just a few spots ahead. These two teams jockeying for tournament position. You can tell there's a lot on the line tonight. Drew Carter back with former Lehigh basketball player Kayla Burton. Kayla, this one's been back and forth. A lot of fun so far. So much fun for both teams. So much fun, but so much competitiveness. I mean, both teams, you can tell, are grinding out there, trying to get whenever one team scores, the other team answers. So going back and forth is clearly showing. I mean, it's a three-point game. You can tell these guys are fighting for a good seed. Here's exactly why it matters. On Monday night, the NCAA Selection Committee released their top 16. If the season were to end today, if this Monday had been Selection Monday, here are your top four seeds in the NCAA tournament in your four different pods. You'll notice Syracuse is absent from this group, and NC State, which started the season 21-0 and back-to-back -back losses in their last two, is still on that two line. So a lot up for grabs tonight. We go down the home stretch. NC State starts with a three-point lead. Leslie uses the elevator doors from Rogers and Kanane, the two bigs. Airballs the jumper, works as a pass, and Elisa Kanane's going back to the stripe. This is crunch time. Kanane is just such a great offensive player who's 
uses her body, not only finds her way inside the paint, but is able to attack that rim using her body leaning in. Gets her to the line. We are seeing a star blossom before our two eyes. Kanane's first free throw, no good. That is a rare sight for Kanane, who's now seven for eight at the line, coming in above 72% on the season. Kanane last time out came off the bench, 31 points at Florida State, 25 points and eight rebounds. Those were both career highs at the time. Still a career high in points with 22, but she's got her first career double-double in her first career start. She does miss the second free throw, though, so she comes up empty-handed, and Syracuse has a chance to tie. The Orange have been lights out from deep, 12 of 29, nearly 42% from beyond the arc. Stroutmana enters it for Jaldi Tabdi, trying to work through the six foot five Kanane. No dice, good defense on the block. Great defense, and Coach Q definitely wanted to get that high to low pass. That's definitely a look that Syracuse is trying to get inside the paint. Gwen Hillsman can feel the urgency. Aaron pass from Rogers. It was deflected by 45 and White Digna Stroutmana. Coach Q's not sure about that call. Wes Moore, the NC State coach, does like it. Now, Coach Q said he wasn't surprised to see Syracuse left out of that top 16, but he knows just how important home court advantage is in the first two rounds. He said earlier in the season, he had a great quote. He says, it's on me. He goes, buy your tickets because we're going. That's the type of coach that has faith in his teammates. Two to shoot, so Leslie lets it fly and knocks it down from the wing. Kiera Leslie back in the driver's seat with 23 points to lead all scores. In case you're wondering, her career high is 31. She set that earlier this season. This is Kiara Lewis, enters it down low for Jolly Tabi again. Tough matchup against Kanane and more good defense from the center in red. That is, that is really great defense by Kanane. Putting her hands up, not going down. A lot of post players, like I said earlier, love to last second try and block it and go down. She's really disciplined and was able to play, just allow that offense to a bad first shot. The Orange fall into that patented 2-3 zone. Kiara Leslie, a huge reason why NC State is leading. They've only got four scores tonight. Leslie is the top dog with 23 points. And she's been lethal from beyond the arc. Trying to use the screen, they did not see the shot clock was winding down. And Syracuse's 2-3 zone chokes the life out of the Wolfpack's offense. It's like a defense to defense game. You see, at one point we're saying great defense by NC State. At another point we're saying great defense by Syracuse. Because they really are both doing amazing defensively. But Tiana on that one, just staying disciplined, wasting that shot clock time. Monica here uses all three screens straight away, but her, her pass went right to Aislinn Koenig. Great hustle and great recovery by number four in white. Monica here regains possession, but the shot clock did not reset. So eight to shoot for Syracuse. Monica here just realized that she's got to go. Two more screens. Got it off the window. Tiana Nakahia with the fantastic bounce back after nearly turning it over, and Syracuse is back within four. Monica is that type of player who lives for those moments. She loves the pressure and seizes it every time. NC State is an experienced team. They're going to try to slow it down, and now Rogers might have been fouled, but not before she walked. Another turnover against the Wolfpack, their 15th of the game. That's above their season average of 14.4. Wes Moore is upset. He knew. His team was going to face a monster in that full court press from Syracuse plus the 2-3 zone on the other end. And he said, with those injuries to three key cogs, Kayla, it's tough to play against a press for 40 minutes when your depth isn't great. He highlighted that point. He said, you know, coming into this game, one of the main key focuses, actually the key focus, is to handle pressure. Also to stop Tiana Manakahia, but to handle that pressure against the press is going to make or break this win. And Tiana Manakahi is not going to give NC State one ounce of breathing room as she forces the issue every second on offense. It was not a shooting foul underneath the basket. Syracuse not yet in the bonus. That was foul number three against NC State in the fourth quarter. So they've got to get two more before the Cuse is going to the stripe every time. Manakahi curling, probing, kick out Stratman up, corner three, no, kissed every inch of the iron. Leslie with the defensive board for NC State. Tight defense for Manakahi. Leslie gave her an arm bar, but the foul goes against Syracuse. And that is number five against the Orange in the quarter. So the Wolfpack should be shooting. Manakahi, <laughs> I love this because point guard to point guard, you try and get that little edge, you try and get that you know, your hand out to try and go for a little steal or get him to trip up, but at one point, the call is going to come. We laid it out before the game, Kayla. This is going to be a battle of guards. Kiara Leslie for NC State bringing the ball up there against the floor general for Syracuse. 
She gets the first free throw to fall. So Leslie up to 24 points. Two of three at the line tonight, above 73% on the season. Knocks down the second free throw as well, and NC State leads by six. It is their largest lead of the game, largest lead for either side. Six points, less than two minutes to play. Manakahia floats it in for Jaldi Tabdi, turns, fires, hits. It's a Jaldi. great, great lob by Manakahia. If she made a direct pass, that would have been an absolute steal. She knows better where Jabdi Tabi wants the ball. Jabdi Tabi does not want it below, she wants it high. It's just a good point guard read. And now if you're Syracuse, you might need to start counting possessions. Leslie helps you out though by firing quickly and missing the three, so here comes the Cuse. Manakahia will waste no time, she never does. Corner pocket for Lewis. Stroutman, an extra feed, no, too short on the three. Leslie soars for the defensive board. Syracuse from deep is one for nine in the fourth quarter as they try to stage this comeback. Syracuse bench, every single player got up because they know Stroutman is due for one. She's right there at the rim on the three. Stroutman, by the way, three for 11 from deep in this game. Manakahia rips it and goes all the way with the fancy move. Gets Leslie to fly by. It's another one possession game at the Dome. I think Manakahia studied Rajon Rondo growing up because her moves are out of this conference. Watch this. What do you call this? Rondoian? I don't know what. Manakahia and something because she's going down left side. Watch. Fake. Ooh. Pivot stops. Puts it in. That is just. That's pretty. Just, she is knowing that this defender is going to go for it, and she patiently finishes. That is the pilfer from Anakahia. <laughs> Goes all the way. Miranda Drummond loves it. Syracuse's red shirt senior shooting guard. Not on the floor right now, but the Qs is coming back only down by two. This all right, so after the timeout, Kayla, what do you draw up if you're NC State and Westmore? NC State right now, they need to get a good possession. You have to work the ball around. You, got, you know, you want to. Syracuse is going to put pressure, I can only imagine, but NC State needs to handle this pressure but not force a turnover. This can make or break them in terms of momentum-wise. NC State needs to get into their offense, move the ball, but to do that, you have to pass fake. If you're not using pass fakes, that's why Syracuse is able to get the deflections that they're getting, is because you're not allowing the defense to shift off of their feet. So NC State needs to work the ball around and get just a good two right now. NC State just coughed it up for the 16th time tonight. Their season average just above 14 for the year. Meanwhile, Syracuse forces more than 19 turnovers per game. One of their calling cards under coach Quentin Hillsman. But Kayla, the interesting thing to note, this could be the time where NC State loses the momentum a little bit because coach Westmore Moore told us with three key cogs out for the season, their depth has been dented. That was a strategic use of the timeout to get his team a breather. It's not easy. NC State right now has to dig in mentally, physically. These players are exhausted. They don't have depth, like you said, but it's, it's crunch time. Koning will inbound from the sideline, finds Jones at the top, going to use the screen from Kinane. Syracuse sets back up in that 2-3 zone, but a lot of pressure. Leslie had a good look at the basket, but the Wolfpack trying to milk some clock. Up by two. They've got a chance to force the Cuse into the last possession of the game, and now Moore calls another timeout. It's a smart call, actually, by Coach Moore. You know, he's really, it, the importance of getting a good possession is going to make or break this game right now. It's going to be so hard. If they can't make a shot, if they can't put the ball in the net, they're going to have to make a lot of defensive plays in order to even get a chance for a transition point in, in general. We are coming down the home stretch between Syracuse and NC State. The Wolfpack have burned two timeouts in the last 30 seconds, so they're down to their last one. It's valuable. That's like gold to Coach Westmore because he's only going to go six or seven deep. Meanwhile, Syracuse has two timeouts at its disposal. NC State does have the possession arrow, and they will be shooting on every foul by Syracuse. And we might reach a point, Kayla, where the Orange need to foul intentionally. Right. NC State right now is probably going to look for a good pick and roll option just to switch up the deep or just to switch up the offense and, and allow them to get a mismatch the orange don't pressure the ball nc state's offense looks like an onion as they peel back the layers Kanane gives it to leslie denied by Stroutmana, but it does stay here great defense by syracuse's latvian sophomore digna Stroutmana uses that 6-2 height look at the help defense as Stroutmana comes in like she has to make the decision whether or not to leave one of the best players on the court but knowing help defense comes first great play Seven blocks for the Cuse tonight, second in the conference with nearly five blocks per game. They have shattered that average tonight with those seven. Koning on the inbound, miscommunication. Manakahia looks like a wide receiver and watch her run. Fouled in transition by Rogers and Tiana's got a shot to tie this game at the strike. 
I think this crowd wanted Manakahia to dunk it at this point. <laughs> I really she might think be able they to do wanted anything. her to dunk it at this point. Tiana Manakahia up to 24 points. If she sinks both these free throws, she will match her season high. Great defense and determination on the other side. That steal right there, she hedged off of her player, almost snuck and was able to get in that steal. That's just so smart. Great basketball IQ. Yeah. Missed her first free throw of the day, so NC State will retain the lead. You could see the agony on the face of Manakahia. Syracuse goes offense for defense, sending Drummond to the bench in favor of Gabrielle Cooper. Tiana Manakahia shooting nearly 90% from the stripe this season. Splits a pair up to 25 points tonight. And Coach Q calls for timeout. As Syracuse, you would assume, will set up that full court press trying to get NC State out of rhythm. Right, right now it's just about staying disciplined on defense. Syracuse, do, they don't need to foul. They just need a good defensive stop. They don't want to allow NC State to get inside. Absolutely no threes. If anything, you can give them a two. You can't. You really have to have high hands out here. I mean, it's a one possession game. You can't give them anything. But being disciplined on defense, they're going to have to not go for steals, but also just get a good defensive stop. Syracuse and NC State, two teams who are likely safely in that NCAA tournament field, Kayla. But these are two teams who know just how important it is to lock up a top four seed. We heard Charlie Cream talk about it at halftime. It is paramount, not just because you're playing in front of your home fans in the first and second rounds as a top four seed, but the travel is a lot easier when you don't have to go anywhere else. This game determines technically where they will be at, at the end. I mean, every game right now matters for all ACC, ACC teams, but getting this stock is going to determine which team is going to you know, be able to host the game or not. And even though both these teams have really been great this season by national standards, think about it from Syracuse's Thank perspective. You. They're on the outside looking in of that top 16 right now. This might be a must win for them if they want to snag a top four seed. Meanwhile, for NC State, they are still on that two line, but they've lost two in a row. So this could be number three in a row, and they might fall into a tailspin with all these injuries. So this is a big game for them tonight, too. NC State has a little bit more wiggle room, a little bit more comfort room, but Syracuse is grinding, needing to get a win in order to even just advance to the next game. Kiara Leslie against Kiara Lewis on the inbound. Leslie finds Kanane, hands it right back to the leading scorer for the Wolfpack, who's fouled by Lewis and will go to the line. Coach Q is a little iffy on that one. I don't think he set that play up. You see Coach Gwen Nelsman shaking his head. I think he wanted them to spend a little more time going for the steal because you've got more than 26 seconds to play. Lewis a little antsy on the foul. Exactly. Here's Leslie's first free throw. It is nothing but twine. Kiara Leslie, the grad student, transferred from Maryland, graduated from UMD in just three years. Her older brother Leslie, her older brother CJ Leslie played basketball at NC State, so she's continuing that family pedigree. She's got to be making her family proud too. 25 points tonight. Tied with Manakahia to lead all scores. I'm telling you, when you have a brother or you have siblings and it gets competitive like that, that's why she's as good as, as what she's showing tonight. It, though, it starts from your childhood. I mean, just having that grit from day one, having fun, obviously, as siblings. But I'm telling you, that, that I have a brother and he did the same thing. All I cared about doing was beating Austin one on one. And I did sometimes, but then he grew 6 4 on me. But <laughs> regardless, you can see her grit and why she's the player she is. Austin, if you're watching, I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure she never beat him. Oh, please, he's soft. <laughs> Kiera Leslie, by the way, a short changer. She's got 27 points. Her older bro, CJ, was a three-time ECC performer at NC State back in the early 2010s, and he played in the D-League back when it was still actually the D-League before they switched to the G-League, and he played overseas, too. By the way, Tiana Monica here right there, number four in white. She's got five brothers, so she knows what it's like to be playing with some, some dudes who are bigger than she is. I'm telling you, it shows. Monakahi has got that grit, that ferocity. Syracuse trails by a possession, 74 to 71. A massive result tonight in terms of NCAA tournament positioning. Monakahi has got the bigger Rodgers, takes advantage of the mismatch, but one heck of a recovery by Rodgers to swat it at the basket. Leslie went soaring into the stands, fouled, and she'll shoot two more free throws. Great defensive play by Leslie. Staying disciplined, can't. Tiana Manakahia was, you know she's going to either attack the rim. In this situation, you need a three, but she, you don't even need to get a three that quickly. It was really a smart play by Manakahia to attack and try and get another possession. But look at the defense here by Rogers, just keeping her hand high, staying disciplined, hands off, and just coming down with this nasty block.
using that size to her advantage. Six foot one Rogers, the senior out of Charlotte. And you could see the look in Manakahia's eyes when she saw the switch onto a big, tried to drive right away. And I think she's a little happy that she was the one who could foul on that possession because she could let out a little frustration. That's those five brothers you were talking about. They're taking another look at this foul to see if it was a little more than a personal. And like we said, Manakahia having just been blocked, it could have been a frustration foul. Watch her come and shove Leslie into the stance. Could be a flagrant one. You can against definitely Syracuse. see the frustration. In that situation, you have to foul regardless. So I think the refs right now, you know, they're contemplating. In this situation, you know you have to foul. But Syracuse knows that they need to get the ball back, send these send NC State to the line and have a possession if they can. But that foul looked a little more with emotion yeah, it was, than usual. That was right on the line between personal and flagrant for Tiana Manakahia. So the officials are still deliberating. At the monitor, you see Brian Burnett and Ed Solosky. They are conferencing right now as Westmore and Coach Quentin Hillsman take advantage of a little extra timeout. Officials trying to decide whether this is a flagrant or a personal against Tiana Manakahia. Daryl Humphrey joins the conversation. Now Manakahia looks like she's all right. You can see a smile back on that face. This is every player saying, I didn't touch her. What do you mean? <laughs> I didn't touch her. Nope, you just shoved her. <laughs> all right, here's the call as Brian Burnett motions for Westmore, the NC State coach, and Coach Quentin Hillsman from Syracuse to join him at the scores table. And Kayla, this is the type of call in a game like this where it's important to get it right. So even if it takes a little extra time, you got to make sure the call's correct. Right, everything matters here. Each possession matters. And it's a three-point game with 16 seconds left. It, this call is important. It's going to make or break the game for both teams. It didn't look like Coach Quentin Hillsman liked the news he got from the official. On sportsmanlike conduct against Syracuse and sportsmanlike foul, two free throws and the ball for NC State. Leslie shoots the first one for the Wolfpack. She did not connect. Hits the second free throw now, so it's back to a one possession game. So as Tiana Monacahia, as the official Ed Solosky described it to us, too much contact, unnecessary, unsportsmanlike play. Goes down as a flagrant one, so NC State gets the lead back to oh. four. Leslie fouled by Lewis again. She'll go back to the stripe, and she's got a chance to crack the 30-point plateau. You just saw Syracuse there staying disciplined on because they didn't want to go for that steal. Excuse me, they didn't want to go for that foul. They want to get the steal, but a little unbalanced movement by Lewis drew the foul. If we were in Raleigh right now, Kiara Leslie would be hearing MVP chance, I think. 100%. And she's been outstanding this game. To play with your starters, but also not having the, the depth in the bench that you look to even just get a two to five minute break, she's been phenomenal. Drills the second free throw up to 29 points tonight, leading all scores. Seven of 10 at the line, eight of 22 from the floor, six of 10 from beyond the yard. And flashing those pearly whites for good reason. Her team leads by five with 10.46 left. All right, so Coach Quentin Hillsman calls timeout for Syracuse. What do you think he draws up out of the break? Right now they're going to need to advance the ball, obviously. That's half the battles, getting the ball, you know, beyond half court, but they don't have to worry about. But they have to get a quick shot. Whether it's a two or a three, you have to read what the defense gives you. Obviously, NC State doesn't want to let any threes happen, but... You know, there's look, there's 10 seconds left. You can go for a quick two, but if you have that chance to get a wide open three, have Tiana Manakahia drive into the middle of the paint, which NC State knows she's going to do. Defense has to learn they cannot, for NC State, gap help too far off of their players because if they get a wide open three and you know how Cuse can shoot, it can be a really close game again. Syracuse is a team. We talked about the pace, Kayla. We talked about the space. We talked about the threes. They can force the turnover. This, if any team can come back from a five point deficit, in 10 seconds, it might be Syracuse. Exactly, and they're playing. Each team right now knows the position that they are in, and they are playing for a win. Syracuse is not going to give up. 10 seconds is actually more time than a lot of people think. 
Syracuse will start with the basketball after Q's timeout. In the front court, the five on the floor for the Orange. Lewis to inbound number 12. Straubman, Ajaldi, Tabdi, Drummond, and Manakahi. A lot of shooting, and they start in the box around the lane. Lewis looking for a teammate. Nearly spent five seconds with a ball, trying to get the easy bucket for Jaldi Tabdi, and they do. So it's back to a one press. possession game, yeah. Here's the press for Syracuse. Good luck, and NC State will get it back into the trust hands of number 11, Kiera Leslie, the grad student. She's going back to the stripe at 29 points right now. Her career high is 31 at Boston College earlier this season. Got a chance to match it. Unbelievable. <laughs> Obviously, she's not the one that you want to send to the line, but in Syracuse's offense, that was really great executing the way they did. They couldn't have asked for a better shot. Maybe a wide open three, but I think that's exactly the play Coach Q drew up. Westmore in chagrin after Leslie misses her first free throw. Now 7 of 11 tonight, 73% on the season. Knocks down the second free throw, up to 30 points to lead all scores. Manakahi has got to go. Lewis left alone in the corner. No, too short. Jaldi Tabi's got the rebound right up at the end. No dice, and NC State survives. The Wolfpack snap a two-game losing streak. NC State establishes itself again as one of the elite teams in the entire country. They only needed four scores to do it. And the Wolfpack rely on their top dogs on Doggy Day to get a win in the Carrier Dome. That is tough to do. This was an unbelievable matchup. I mean, we said it right from the start that this matchup was going to be really close. And clearly it shows 77 to 73. Both teams showing offensive and defensive grit on both ends. At both ends, NC State, they don't even have much depth as we talked about. So for them to be able to get rally together and finish this out was an awesome job. NC State up to 22 and two on the season. Our next women's basketball telecast on the ACC Network Extra this Sunday as the Wake Forest Demon Deacons traveling to the Dome to face the Orange. Game time is 2 p.m. So for Kayla Burton, the rookie, doing a fantastic job. Our stats man, Cora Babarian, our director, Scott Hecht, our producer, Kristen Hennessy. I'm Drew Carter saying so long from the Carrier Dome. Final score tonight, 77-73 NC State. Watch this game on replay and all our other games on our family of ESPN Networks on WatchESPN.com. So long. We'll see you next time.